Hello, and welcome to another vintage speed build video. My name is Myler, and today I'm building this 1930 Spanish Revival style bungalow. It's just got one bedroom, one bath, kitchen, living room, dining room. Teensy tiny. I want to say first off, I could not get that gate in the front archway. It's just not possible. If somebody can do it, do it for me. <laughs> Because I couldn't figure it out. Um, this floor plan is from a book called Build a Home First. And specifically, it's their Artistic Homes book. And um, these were just intended to be like popular floor plans of the time. Provided to the masses for the low, low price of cheaper than other people. And that's that. Um... At this time, revival styles were increasingly popular. Americans became fascinated with their origins, I guess, or maybe not their origins, the origins of the country, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You, this is when you start to see Tudor revival, you see Greek revival, you see uh, like colonial revival, all of that. What's the other one? Mediterranean? <laughs> All of that comes back in these decades, like 1920s and onwards. Um, so this is just part of that whole trend. It's still being built. Uh, if you live in California or Arizona, those are the main areas I know where these houses are. Probably Florida too, but I don't know much about Florida. Um, but track homes like modern track homes you know the ones that get put up in like 30 days and there's like hundreds of them and they all look the same and there's no backyards and they're like four inches away from each other so often they do like their version of spanish style or like i guess what the modern version of spanish style is and i hate it so much i thought for the longest time that i really hated spanish style houses because growing up in Southern California, um, but like inland Southern California, I didn't really see these ones. I didn't see the older Spanish Revival ones. I only saw like the more modern ones in the track homes. And oh, they're so ugly. They're so ugly. I hate them so much. Those in the Mediterranean ones are really, really ugly. And they put them in like the same neighborhoods next to each other as if it's like some sort of eclectic design. It's so bad. I hate it so much. Anyways, I really like these vintage ones though. Like 1930s um, Spanish Revival, Tudor Revival. Those are my favorite. Those and the Cinderella Ranches, those are my top three favorite style of houses, hands down. I'm so sad though that in The Sims 4, I can barely scratch the surface of the 1930s like amazingness that you can find with these style of houses. Typically, the tile work in the bathrooms and the kitchens is just gorgeous. If you want to really see it, I suggest checking out the Instagram uh, Vintage Bathroom Love. It's all one word. And they post constantly, but people like send them in uh, like listings and photos and etc of vintage houses that still have their original bathrooms and kitchens and whatever else it's still intact and it's like like I have a Instagram side Instagram that I, I do that on sometimes every so often when inspiration <laughs> strikes me um, but the vintage bathroom love is like much better <laughs> they post like Spanish style ones and Tudor style ones from the 1930s and 1940s all the time so if you want to see like the real the real magic of them the real beauty of them go check out that instagram because what we can do in the sims is not even close not even close <laughs> um one thing that's different here than other builds because you know that's one thing that kind of sucks about doing these is since the packs that we've been getting haven't been adding that much of, you know, the style of furniture that I like to use for these houses. 
I tend to use the same stuff over and over again, but this house I really tried to use different things. <laughs> like different pieces of furniture and stuff that I don't typically use. Um, and like the flooring here, I never use this wood floor because I really hate it. <laughs> but I do feel like it fits the, because it's from the jungle adventure pack. So it's the closest thing we have to like that sort of style at all. Um, so I figure, you know, that fits closer it, they look like wide plank and you know hand scraped so that does fit with the Spanish style of houses that was something that they emphasized was kind of the handmade aspects since traditionally um, these houses were made out of like adobe by hand and you know they would have like clay roof tiles and the floor tiles were made by hand and like you know all of that so that's something that is to be appreciated in these houses it's similar to craftsmen in that um you were supposed to appreciate the handy work that went into the making of the house and that's something that i think the modern ones lack for sure like the track homes because of just the fact that they are put up so quickly and you know so manufactured i guess or not manufactured but I don't know, like, systematically, it's different. It, they don't have the nuances that these houses have. And One thing I think is, like, my most successful part of this build is probably the kitchen. Um, I think the whole little table area just came out really like how I envisioned it in my head. <laughs> it was something that you see a lot in older houses. They would typically have like a little table inside of the kitchen um, that was separate from their dining area that, you know, would be less formal, more casual. Granted, the dining room in this house does take up a lot of the house, so maybe they would have used it more often. I don't know. Um, oh, it does show in the floor plan. I wanted to mention a few little quirks about the floor plan. If you don't know how to read floor plans that well, um, the reason I put little pipe there and the reason the stove is here, even though in the floor plan, there is no indication of where the stove is really, uh, there's a small square in the floor plan that shows most likely that's where a chimney or exhaust pipe was. Typically that's what those would signify. If you look at the fireplace, it has one. Um, and so that's why I put the stove there. That's why the little pipe is there as well. And the door here is a swinging door. If you look at the floor plan, it indicates that just by how it's got like little lines on the door. Anyways, so this is the only swinging door we have. And granted, it does look a little bit too modern for the style of the house. It, it's fine. It's close enough, which is my motto. Close enough. <laughs> but I do think the kitchen came out very nicely, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. I will say bedrooms in this period, for like a long period of time, don't really change that much. And especially with like the limitations of styles of furniture we have in The Sims 4, like the bedrooms do get a bit repetitive. Bedrooms, I think, are my least favorite thing to do in these like videos <laughs> in these vintage houses because they tend to just be kind of the same the only ones that get like different are if i do like two twin size beds or if i do um like a 1960s or 1970s home but pretty much anything <laughs> earlier than that bedrooms are kind of the same granted i could have gone for the very like plain white wall in here as well but they used wallpaper in 1930s regardless of the style of home wallpaper was big time popular no matter what style of house you had so i feel like they would have probably had wallpaper in the bedroom here and not just done the white stucco or plaster whatever for the whole house because the the outside of the house isn't even super, super Spanish style. So I feel like the inside wouldn't have been strict on that, you know? 
maybe that's just me giving myself an out <laughs> for not wanting to do a white bedroom. Whatever, it's fine. Um, the bathroom is pretty typical, I think. The colors are really the main thing that make it 1930s, and of course the pedestal sink is like that shape of the having the straight sides but the round front is really um, popular in the 1930s, but usually it was a lot bigger. Like they'd have much larger sinks and much smaller pedestal just size wise. The pedestal in this one is way, way, way too like traditional looking, but it's fine. I accepted it because I didn't want to put a countertop. I just wanted to have a pedestal sink and I didn't want to use the same sink I use in every single other house. <laughs> I tried to use things that I don't use in every, every single build just, you know, to show that I can use other items. <laughs> um, now I'm just doing landscaping. I cut out a lot of this because it got tedious, but I try to copy the illustration as closely as I felt like doing. <laughs> Anyways. If you want to download this house, it is available on the gallery under my username. I'll leave it in the description below. But yeah, I don't really have any plans for my next video. I might take some suggestions from you guys. I might do another Animal Crossing villager. I don't know. Currently, nothing in my brain. But you'll see it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me greatly appreciate it and i hope you enjoyed this video hope to see you next time stay safe okay bye